We're making an artichoke burger today. It's not a big deal. Let's whip out the ingredients and let's get started. I bet I screwed this up. The ingredients today are pretty chill. I'm not asking for any sort of rare fungus only found in the Amazon rainforest or anything like that. The burger is going to be savory and herby and even though I look confused, the first step is to grate some cheese with my dumb and dull grater. I'm so sorry. I'm... I'm an idiot. I've been living in Pittsburgh for going on four years now, and recently I decided to pursue actually buying a house. Mostly so I can get you guys out of my 4x4 kitchen and into something nicer. So I can do some real cooking. You need to mix it up! Oh, I'm sorry, Louise. I didn't realize you didn't want me to grate cheese from the same camera angle for 30 plus seconds. It won't happen again. The real question is, are you guys hyped as f to watch me mince some garlic or what? No, oh, no. If I wanted to feel like a loser, I'd just call my kids. Unrelated, but one time I was walking home from the bars during a night out in college with some friends, and someone leaned out of a moving car window and drilled me with a powdered donut in the chest. It left me impressed with their aim, but also confused. Is nothing sacred? Can't I just take out the trash one time without getting hit on by some perv? So now every time I go outside or even see a Dunkin' Donuts, I have PTSD. Thankfully, Kevlar vests aren't that expensive and I'll be ready for the next time. With the garlic getting to a nice level of minced, I have to say we are on the right track. Mm, more like a swing and a miss. All right, so we need to continue prepping with some fresh herbs. So call me Herbie fully loaded because this buggy is racing ahead full speed. The smell in the kitchen is starting to come alive. The energy is electric and I just might be falling in love. Two people together forever. Security in life and someone to love you instead of being all alone. Such a lonely existence, I kill myself. If you could do anything in life, what would you do? It can be a job, but it doesn't have to be limited to that. Would you travel? Would you create something special? I think I would love to open up a pub in some beautiful location, maybe Ireland. What a great way to bring happiness to people. Unfortunately, reality loves to rain on the parade. Taking our jobs, marrying our women. But as I approach 30 years old, which is ancient depending on which 17 year old you talk to, I feel like the next chapter of my life is maybe on the horizon. The book of life comes at you fast, but I'm not sure where my story leads yet. You are the worst storyteller. Where's Maya Angelou when you need him? Anthony Bourdain is one of my biggest inspirations in life. And I would love to be able to travel around and tell interesting stories on people cooking in life the way he did. Imagine being able to find out what it's like to run an eatery in a small village in Iceland. I am kind of introverted though, so I bet creating documentaries like that would be a huge test for me. I got your love testometer right here, pal. Anyways, back to the recipe at hand. The artichokes have been prepped, so let's let them shimmy on out of here and start getting real with this can of peeled tomatoes. Through brute strength and American ingenuity, I was able to free them from their metal prison. That is so romantic! Aww. Of course, then I proceeded to maim them beyond recognition without any remorse. Oh, it's now time we start to get oil into the pan so we may cook and let everything sizzle. But maybe I don't want to hear it, Ron! All right. We'll start by adding our chopped artichokes into the oil to warm them up and infuse. They will bring a distinct and tangy quality to the mixture we are preparing. If you haven't had the pleasure of using artichokes other than an artichoke dip, they are great and versatile like wearing a fanny pack at a no pockets convention. Let's roast the garlic and get the kitchen nice and fragrant. And how about we get some tomatoes in here too? All right, I could go for that. I'm in. The tomatoes are going to add a good bit of acidity. So with everything in life, we need to find a good balance. One of the best ways to balance out any dish is to add some fat or oil. So that's where a good chunk of butter comes into play. I said things will get herby today. And the sentiment continues to be true with the marjoram, which is pretty similar to oregano in taste. Sergeant Bosco, can you hand me the rest of the herbs? No, I chucked it into a ravine after my divorce went through. That's fine, we can just use what we prepped earlier. Just toss them in and let them do their magic. Hit our mixture with some flaky salt and then churn baby churn. Or I guess mix it around. Try to keep stirring it as everything gets brought up to temperature. The kitchen should be smelling extremely nice and it should all come as a relief because we are nearing three fourths of the way done. We do need to get the cheese we grated stirred in as well, which will help balance out the dish. And who's ready to fall in love? I absolutely am. This is looking incredible. And who doesn't love the look of melted cheese mixed with a tomato-y sauce? Somehow nostalgic with a look of, oh yeah, this might be unhealthy for me, but I am completely here for it. I mean, just observe the oils that are forming at the bottom of the pan. This mixture is going to hit our taste buds hard, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. Yeah, yeah, work those nubs. All right, it's meat time. A time where we come together to exchange stories of meat, seeing, and form slash season a perfect patty. So like my father and his father before him, let's get this bad boy coated with salt and ground pepper. Once the optimal seasoning ratio has been achieved, we'll do what we do best, roll that patty around to get a consistent coating on all sides. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This is what perfection looks like. Do you have any idea what you've just done? Yeah, because I just saved dinner. Now I'm about to crank out one of the best cooked hamburgers you will ever witness. The most wild part about cooking all these patties for the channel is that every single patty ends up a little bit different. Somehow I make small and conscious changes that make a big difference in the texture and the look, which is definitely a product of me never measuring anything out. What a cluster jam! We are finally on the home stretch, so let's finish out what we came here to do. What do you think? Should we toast our buns or leave them cold and lifeless? Very funny. Stop goofing. All right, all right. Well, let's get the patty out of the way so we can introduce our buns to the hot pan then. Lay them down like so, and then we can rock and roll. Start with the bottom bun. Followed by a juicy patty. Top it with our artichoke mixture. And then complete with the top bun. Incredible work, everyone. What a delicious smelling burger. It looks exactly how I envisioned it. And according to the recipe book, it doesn't even need a condiment. That's a pretty bold statement. Let's see if it's true. I'm gonna take a bite and tell you how it tastes. There's just so much going on. And honestly, that melted cheese and those artichokes is just phenomenal. The combination of all the flavors, just fantastic. Very garlicky, very salty, very savory. Just everything you'd want in a burger. Review time. I'm going with an 8.5 out of 10. Very delicious overall, with enough uniqueness to make multiple times. Every burger's turning out very well. I'm really happy with it. So thanks for watching another episode. I'll see you next time. Peace. Thanks for feasting with me today. And please subscribe if you liked what you saw.